Welcome to another edition of the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders podcast, a.k.a. The Whip Show. And right now, you are railing with the World Heavyweight Champion, Mr. Joe Walker. Before we begin, I would like to thank everybody that has supported our Jade Cargill versus Brick House parts one and two, especially part two because it does feature Whip Dog. And we're so happy that you guys continue to support the Whip Dog Network. Everything here on the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders podcast. Everything with Coach also is greatly appreciated. Sincerely from all of us, thank you for continuing to support the network. Now, to the 11,000 who have made the first two episodes a success, this conversation must continue. And we're going to continue it not just with me. Not Whip Dog this time. I know you guys love to hear from him, but this time we have another guest to continue this discussion. And not just any guest, but the greatest man alive. <laughs> he is the creator, owner, founder, and chief operator of Rock Bottom Studios, the illustrator, writer, and creator of Jet Boy, Shadow Club Karma. He is one of the best and most successful independent comic book illustrators and publishers in the nation. A regular at all of the big events. Corey Rockbottom Davis. Corey, welcome to Railing. Thank you for taking part of the show. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thanks for having me, brother. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, we've been having these conversations elsewhere for years but now we get to do it on the wrestling heroes and insiders podcast and talk about something that we both enjoy yes professional wrestling remember remember those wrestlemania preview articles we used to do <laughs> and the oh, SummerSlam oh, yeah. preview articles and all that stuff wow we haven't oh, done that yeah. in a long time yeah you know and and and, and something to kind of give the people a little bit more of a backstory on that it, like we would talk for like hours prior <laughs> right. about that very topic and we were just like man should we be recording this <laughs> just start writing it down. <laughs> oh man but yeah we would we would go on for hours and oh, hours man. about th these these topics man and and it, it's 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 sad because you guys only get a smidgen of what it is that we talked about i know before. can you imagine how if we had recorded those conversations and shared them like 10 years ago oh my god what that could have done you know just hours of hours of content hours, hours of con days of content. day man weeks and months of content we had there was so much of it those, those, those conversations were great man yeah but but now we're going to talk about we're going to talk about aew's TBS champion Jay Cargill. She's undefeated. She's made a splash from the second she appeared on television. Mm -hmm. And now the discussion has been circulating about who should be the person to defeat her. And and here on Railing at the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders podcast, uh, we we began a discussion of um, the NWA Women's World Champion Camille, the Brick House, should be the person to beat her. And when we first started the discussion, um, the response was was great so then whip dog jumped in on the second part and we continued the discussion and you know some people agree some people don't but that's just the nature of opinion um before we get into who you think should defeat jade cargill what what do you think of the idea of a jade versus brick house matchup i think probably out of any other female wrestler you can put in that category i think that that would probably be the more most realistic matchup just matchup wise at all that because that, that'll probably you could probably make that happen mm. a lot easier with the relationship that nwa had with AEW, at least in the past I, you could probably make that match happen like I would, and and that's something that I would love to see. I would love to see these two women mix it up because I think that this this matchup would would be like one for the ages for both companies actually because you know they kind of you know in the beginning 
at least they kind of piggybacked off of each other alongside um, TNA and all that stuff. The Forbidden Door was open, you know, and I mean, that's something that they kind of use to their advantage over at AEW anyway. Mm -hmm. So why not do it? And I think that that would probably be the like the more realistic thing um, that I would see happening. How I feel about Brickhouse taking that title off of Jade, I got to agree. I got to agree. I would think that that would probably since and and not just because it's it's the more realistic of of matchups when you compare anybody else. Mm -hmm. I just think that that would be a solid match. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would be a solid match. It would be interesting because, like, let's be honest. For the most part, whenever you see Jade fighting somebody, you, you already know you. you you can look at their, their opponent sometimes and just say, okay, Jade's going to win this. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever really gave Jade a run for their money, not, not run for her money. Now, granted, she's had some good matches, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't remember or I don't recall ever seeing a match where I just felt like this person could walk away with it. Mm. I agree. I could. I never saw a match, and I've seen, for the most part, all of her matches first run. Or if I don't see it first run, I, I always go back and watch YouTube, and you know, and and you know, if if I can't find the match anywhere, I know Ollie Davis and 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 Wrestle Talk will always be there <laughs> Word. to inform me of everything in 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 true Wrestle Talk manner because they're. They're they're hilarious, but they're accurate as all get out. <laughs> so yeah, so I know that I'll find it. But with um, with that said, I've I've never seen her face an opponent to where that opponent could be a serious threat to her. Mm -hmm. I agree. So so I'm I'm looking at this whole thing with Brickhouse and saying. This could be one of those things where Tony Khan can just kind of jump in and say, okay, how can we, you know, capitalize off of this? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking maybe like, you know, just just have like, like you can go like a, a title for title match or something like that or... Yes. You know, I, I guess it, it just depends on who's holding what title at the time. I mean, we already know Jade has that title, and she's not letting go of it. Right. No time soon. So I would think Brickhouse probably would be the best person to come through and take it off of her. And, and I think when when you talk, when, when they have those discussions about who could possibly beat beat Jade, mm -hmm. you could you could flip it too because if when you when you look at the competitors that Brickhouse has faced in the NWA and beyond Mexico. Japan or wherever, mm -hmm. she has yet to face an opponent that looked like they could possibly win. I mean, she's had some some good matches, but Brickhouse is on a historic run with the Burke right now. I mean, she's what mm -hmm. seven hundred days or yeah. something like that. And yeah, Jade is fifty and zero or fifty one and zero or whatever her her record her record is. I know it's, it's beyond fifty at this point. Um, mm -hmm. Comparing the two, yeah, you have these two dominant performers mm -hmm. who look like they can kick your head in. Yep. They look like they can't be stopped. But mm -hmm. to put one against the other, no matter which way it folds, whether you bring Brickhouse to AEW or you have mm -hmm. Jade show up in the NWA, right. it's still like, okay, this is a good matchup. But experience wise, should Jade beat Brickhouse? I gotta say no. I think right. Brickhouse is is the one. And uh like Whip Dog pointed out on, on, on our second part of this discussion, on part two of this discussion, he was like, you know, Brickhouse was asked, you know, at a summit, yo, who you know, who do you want to face? Who you know, what's an opponent that interests you right now? And she said Jade Cargill. Mm-hmm. Right. I think that was at the the busted open show, one of, one of their live shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
she said Jay Cargill. So um, I I truly believe that this should be explored uh, from a fan's perspective. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I threw out the idea of Triple H uh, bringing back the Mae Young Classic. Yes. And instead of having the Mae Young Classic in predictably with a WWE superstar, which they could easily do, you know, build up somebody from NXT or, you know, maybe a new signee that they want to build, have right. that final come down to two women who aren't from the promotion, have it come down to Brickhouse and Jade. That would be monumental for not just for the women in wrestling, but for professional wrestling, period. I mean, what a final in a prestigious tournament that would be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I, I, I like the idea of Triple H being in the position that he's in right now, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking like maybe if they just let Triple H just go all out. Yeah, he did say they were open for business. Yeah. I can see a phone call with him and Tony Khan. Mm-hmm. In a in a perfect world, you know, I could I could see that, but you know, I can also kind of see that if they are open for business, then put your money where your mouth is. Yes, sit down with Tony Khan. Mm-hmm. They can. It, I mean, this could be the start of a new invasion angle. Oh wow, that would be something, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, and just open that forbidden door. I mean, it's been successful for AEW. It has. Yeah, and that's the thing about it. Like, in, even in the beginning, they were open. For, I mean, they were open for business. They were doing stuff with every promotion except for WWE. Mm. That's what it feels like, at least. I know they had New Japan. They they still do stuff with New Japan. Um, uh, they did uh, Impact for a while, and and didn't they? They did do stuff with NWA before. Mm-hmm. So I I think that you know this could be something that could you know, span other promotions and everything. And, and, you know, that would be, uh, that's actually a, a fantastic idea with the Mae Young Classic. Um, just bringing that back and, and having it at, like that be a gateway to open that forbidden door. And see, at least for WWE, at least. Yeah. And, and, and I think about, you know, Mickey James coming out in the Royal Rumble as the Impact Women's Champion. But right. but going back further, like you like you were saying with their relationship that they had with the, with NWA back in the day, um, I think people forget that during that time when when Nitro was so hot uh-huh. and and WWE's ratings were were not the greatest, and they as they were kind of starting to rebuild, you saw a lot of wrestlers from the NWA come through WWE, and also people forget the the original ECW invasion. Yep, of WWE. That yep. That was it. That was it. I remember that cuz um yeah, cuz that, that was around the time cuz uh, I'm trying to remember who who came over first during that whole invasion angle. I think it was um cuz I I don't know if that was Taz or not. I feel like it was Tommy Dreamer. I think like I feel like Tommy it Dreamer was. was first. I think Tommy Dreamer was first and then, and then I think the Dudley boys Yep. Showed up. Oh and yeah, because that's when um they attacked Brian Christopher. Yeah. And then Jerry Lawler went to ECW Arena and hit mm-hmm. Tommy Dreamer in, in the testicles with the with the yep. stick. <laughs> that's right. I remember seeing that. I remember seeing that when it was new or or at least when it popped up on, you know, popped up on TV back then. Yeah, yeah. but that was that was wild. That was a wild time, and they they still. I mean, they can make that kind of magic again. They can. Yeah, and I mean, because they they have to realize, you know, you're going to be appealing to wrestling fans mm-hmm. everywhere. You're not really going to get by much just keeping everything separated. Mm-mm. You know, you've seen the success that all these other companies have had, like with AEW. You know, they put their money where their mouth was, and. Said they were open for business, and then next thing you know, you had like the the good brothers fighting alongside the elite again. Yes, you know, you, you have all of that kind of stuff. So, yep, 
Yeah, so I mean, yeah, Aussie why? Open show up. Will Ospreay and his crew and mm-hmm. yes, they, mm-hmm. they, 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 he, yeah, he has made some moves. He has done some things for the mm-hmm. benefit of the professional wrestling fan, which mm-hmm. of course benefits the professional wrestling business. So right. wh- wh- while I'm saying that, and going back to the idea of the May Young Classic, and you know mm-hmm. what, whatever, whatever way they can make, you know, Jade versus. Um, brick house happen whether it's in the nwa whether it's in the in aew or if you know a scenario like that happened in wwe which would make it even bigger if it was on a wwe stage but but imagine this um there there's still been talk about the idea of them doing a a revolution Uh two pay-per-view right is revolution two and why has not come to fruition um that would be an opportunity for them to just with that title, Women's Revolution 2, put together a main event that would be so historic. And this is what I'm thinking. Jay Cargill, she's, let's say she's still undefeated. Mm-hmm. Brick, Brick House is still on this incredible run as, as the NWA Women's World Champion. Mm-hmm. No one has knocked off Mickey James yet. She's still got the Impact Women's title, even though she's been you know, kind of teasing in with, with retiring. She's still right. on this run like, man, she's taking on everyone from all promotions. Like, Mickey James has been on fire. Right. Um, from Impact to Mexico and back. Like, And then, so you have Mickey James, you have uh-huh. Jade Cargill, you uh-huh. have Brickhouse, and then uh-huh. let's say you have Rhea Ripley with the strap around her waist in a fatal four-way. Oh, man, that would be heaven. Remember when they did the, the they used to do the, the Cyber Sunday pay-per-view or. Yep. Um, and they had the champions, the champion of champions match. Yep. What I if they did that. something like that with uh-huh. four women from four different promotions, all the champions? Yeah. I mean, heck, throw in, throw in the IWGP women's championship. Why you at it too? bring, you know, Mercedes back. Mercedes, yes. Yes, I was thinking that as as you were saying it. I mean, make it make it a six pack challenge. Let's get Jamie Hader in there too. If she's you know she's still carrying the strap, why not? Man, or, who, or whoever has got that belt at the time, you got six of the most dominant women in the world clashing. Mm-hmm. Yes, on, on a WWE stage. I mean, whoo! That would blow WrestleMania off the map because you know that you can't do that on any other stage but WrestleMania. Yeah, that's gotta be. Especially if WWE is involved, they would want to milk that for all it's worth. Put was, it on the grandest stage of them all. I would still give I'm it just, to Brick House. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, real talk. I would still give it to Brick House. I would have it come down to to Camille and uh, Aria, man. But seriously, right, right, right. And that that and that alone would be worth watching, man. God. Well, if it's like, if it was like in a six like a six pack challenge six pack elimination match, I, yeah. I would I would have to think the last three would be Brick Rhea and Jamie Hayter. Like seriously, <laughs> yeah, I can see that. That would I be a bloodbath. <laughs> man, that would be a massacre right there. <laughs> but I would have to I give mean, it to Brick, man, for real. Really, I would. Because yeah. Brick, I, I mean, Brick is no joke, man. Now, she got trained at the Team Three D Academy. Yeah. That was the Dudley boys. She got trained by the Dudleys. Yeah. So yeah, she's nothing to mess with. No. <laughs> no. And I and in yeah. a match like that, you know, from I could I could see WWE want to have Charlotte in that match instead of maybe somebody like Rio or Bianca or mm-hmm. you know. Um would I want to see Charlotte challenge Brickhouse? Would I I mean Again, talking about who could beat these women. The right. conversation being Jay Cargill and 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 and, and Camille. Mm-hmm. But could I see Charlotte beating Jade? Could I see Charlotte beating Camille? Yes, but no. I'm I'm in the same boat. I I yeah. I think Charlotte is in a place now where she should be building new stars and not beating them. Right. And even with these two women being as accomplished as they are, a victory over Charlotte would make them even bigger. Yes. And I think that she would 
in that position, talking about following in her father's footsteps, she could do yeah. for them what Ric Flair did for Sting. Yeah, and you know, I think that she would be down to do it, but it's not up to her, unfortunately. It's up to the higher ups at WWE. And, you know, I'm thinking that sometime in the near future, that might be something that's doable if Triple H, you know, does the right thing. You know what I'm saying? With, you know, saying that, you know, they're open for business. Okay, how open are you? And I think that that would be a perfect way to kind of open that lane for that to happen. But yeah, I'm 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 a huge fan of the idea of Charlotte going at it with you know at least one of them. But th- I guess that would be up to whatever higher ups are over there at you know the company that she works for. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I know what the other companies would say. You know I think they would you know for the most part at least i think they would see the benefit in that you know but i don't know it's it's you know it's it, you know what it's like it's like what vince mcmahon told rick flair back in the day he's like every time we lead you to greatness you take a step back and do something stupid mm. That's been the M.O. of the WWE for years. Every time they do something great on their platform, they take a step back and do something stupid. Mm. So that's why I'm, 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 I'm kind of weary about ever seeing anything like that happen. Because, I mean, they, they'll say they're open for business, but then they won't they won't do something to, you know, along those lines to please the fans, like crossing over like that, you know. And because, you know, every fan wants to see somebody from WWE mix it up with somebody from AEW or somebody at NWA. But, you know, we never know if, if we're going to get that when it comes to WWE because they always take that step back. So the idea of seeing Charlotte go up against either of them is kind of like, yeah, this is something that we may never see happen in our lifetime. But there is somebody in charge now, Triple H, who may be able to make that happen, but it, it all has to do with how much power do they really give him and how much he really is willing to, you know, live by what he said as far as they're open for business. So I, I would love nothing more to see Charlotte mix it up with, with either of them or do a triple threat. I would that would I would stop whatever I'm doing <laughs> in the world just so I can see the three of them mix it up. Because the idea of that is is more exciting than than anything else, you know. But but yeah, um, that that would that would that would be something. That that would be something. I guess it, it's only a matter of time to see if you know the WWE actually has the guts to go forth with something like that. Mm. Thank you for listening to Railing with the Word Heavyweight Champion, Mr. Joe Walker, on the Wrestling Heroes and Insiders podcast, a.k.a. The Whip Show. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and support the platform wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow the Whip Show podcast on all social media and follow me on Twitter at Mr. Joe Walker. No excuses. Championships only. Be kind. Be creative. Win.